What a pleasure it is to introduce the 2019 Greg Norman medalist, Hannah Green. What a remarkable year it's been. A standout Australian on one of the fiercest tournaments going around. Hannah, it must have been a huge thrill last night to be awarded the highest honour in golf. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it's really cool to be recognised by so many past players. I guess obviously standout would be Kari, but um, to have Greg and Roger and you know Pete and all those guys um, to then vote on me to win, it's pretty cool because it's tough competition against uh, the other nominees. How big an impact has Kari had on your career? I know growing up she was an idol of yours mm -hmm. and then obviously working closely with her as your professional career took flight. Mm -hmm. How significant of a role did she play? Yeah, huge. Um, she took me to my first ever LPGA tournament um, to watch and uh, to go to a US Open when I knew I wanted to turn pro. It was just perfect. Um, and it was even better that week because I think she finished in the top 10. So got to see the stuff like media. Um, it was the first time really knowing um, how much there is to do when you're in contention. And um, I think that really helped me for KPMG. But um, yeah, she's been a huge factor to my career and probably a lot of the other girls on tour um, at the moment. So I really have to thank her for opening everyone's eyes to it. What was your goal setting like heading into this season? Mm -hmm. I think you would have been fiercely determined to make your mark on the tour. Mm -hmm. Did you envisage at all the success that would await this year? Yeah, not at all. Um, I didn't have any plans to win any tournaments. I mean, yes, you go out there trying to do your best and you hope that you can win every week, but um, on my little yeah goal list, none of them was to say win a major, win a tournament. So it was pretty much just trying to stay as consistent throughout the season. Um, last year I missed 10 cuts and I just wanted to make sure that I was making the cut, but also um, finishing better um, on the results that I when I did make the cut. So um, obviously... Besides the two wins, I did achieve that, so I'm really happy. Um, it wasn't too up and down a uh, year this year. Um, there was some really poor results. I think I shot um, at, in the 80s, uh, the first major of the year, so there was some low points this year, but obviously some real high points too. We'll take questions. Uh, speaking of goals, Hannah, what are your goals for the upcoming season? I haven't actually sat down and thought about it. Um, so once I um, came home from CME, I was home for three days and then came to the Aussie Open um, to watch my partner Jared play and then was at President's Cup and now here this week. So I really haven't had much time to relax and kind of soak it all in as such. So um, when I get back home, I'm going to be home for a few days and then go to Bali. So I'll be able to properly switch off then and um, that's when I'll go and see my coach and you know start setting goals and start getting a plan for January to get me ready for the whole entire season. Uh, Hannah, uh, had you played with Adam Scott before and what was the... what a two major winners to talk about? Yeah, um, it was my first time actually meeting him this morning. So um, it was really cool um, to be interacting with him and, um, you know, watch him. He's obviously come off some good form from last week and um, it's great that he's, you know, I guess, in his hometown um, playing here and just to even see how he interacts with all the kids and everyone coming up and asking for signatures. It's, it's time consuming. I give it to him and he's done a really great job with handling it all. Um, but yeah, we're just talking about last week, um, talking about the course this week and um, just scheduling, um, just, you know, normal stuff, nothing, nothing too different. Um, but yeah, it was really approachable and really easy to talk to. Um, uh, I guess you, you mentioned the word scheduling there. Have you, I, I know you're committed always to, to play as much as you can on this LPG or the ALPG tour, mm -hmm. but uh, any little tweaks you can see for the, the local women's tour that would, would be beneficial? Yeah, so um, this year I was lucky enough I got to play four events on the ALPG, but um, it, two events clashed this year um, on the LPG uh, schedule, um, which I am in, entered to play. So I'll only get to play two this year, which is a shame, but um, I've actually never been to those countries before, so I'd love to go and see it. Um, I hope, you know, with the PGA and the ALPG merging that, you know, we can get some more events on the schedule and that I can play more at home. Um, it's definitely, I think my stats would show that I play really well when I'm in front of a home crowd. Um, I've had good results the last few um, Australian Opens. So um, I'd love to play at home and I wish the LPGA <laughs> could have some more tournaments, um, more co-sanctioned events. Um, hopefully that can happen in the future. And you mentioned earlier about um, what you learned from Kari when she first took you over there mm -hmm. about practice and dealing with the media. How much have you had to put that into practice, I guess, in the six months since you won? I imagine your life's just, you know, in terms of balance, time out, 
mm -hmm. type of practice or what type of thing? Yeah, it's huge. Um, I guess once I won KPMG, um, after signing my scorecard, I was there for four hours after the uh, round had completed, um, doing all the media, getting ready for next year um, with all the promotion stuff. So that was a huge eye opener to me. I had no idea. I just thought you'd go home and celebrate pretty much. Um, so that was a little bit delayed, but even just coming back to my next event, it was another major, so obviously a, a, a big, bigger tournament. But um, when I got to Evian, I had only one request that I had known about, but by the time I got there, I had to do six or seven things. So um, now that I've signed with IMG, um, they can you know help me schedule um, my, my week, and um, it's great that they've jumped on board, and I'm really happy to have them. And yeah, it's definitely different. Um, I didn't realize yeah, how time consuming. Um, obviously, KPMG leading wire to wire. I was in here doing press conferences and, you know, I didn't practice just because I was so exhausted. Um, it takes a lot of time out of you, but I really respect all the, you know, t world top 10 players, men and female. Um, it's, it's a lot to juggle. Um, Hannah, I guess winning in Portland mm -hmm. must have been very special because the was the potential for a letdown after the KPMG. Was that a particularly satisfying week for you to be able to go on and win again? Yeah, definitely. Um, it was nearly just as important as the first win. Um, obviously, even to myself, it was kind of out of the blue to win KPMG, but I think to then come back to another event and be able to take another title um, just proves that it, it wasn't just a fluke and I'm not going to be a player that just wins once. And um, yeah, it, I think um, I actually missed the cut the week before um, Portland and even before KPMG. So I wasn't really thinking too much. So I think it was really good for me to have kind of a clear, clear mind and um, yeah, played some of my best golf at Portland. So it was really, it was great to, you know, be in contention and fight against um, yearly me at the time. Um, but yeah, it gave me a lot of confidence for the rest of the season. Just on what you're going to do between now and the Vic Open, mm -hmm. you, is there an event somewhere else before the Vic Open uh, on the LPGA Tour? Yeah. There's Will you play that? No, I won't be. Um, so we have the Tournament of Champions, which is, I think, the second week of January. And then following that, there's another tournament in Boca, um, so both in Florida. But um, I've decided to not play them. Um, I haven't really had much time to switch off from golf, um, even though I have been outside the ropes most of the time um, these three weeks. I still have played some golf and haven't really been in a non-golf environment. Um, so I'm, when I get back to Perth on Sunday, I'll properly put the clubs away, um, not go to golf course and actually have some time off. And then, then I think I'll be ready to get ready for next year. And how's it been working with, you're working with Richie Smith, aren't mm -hmm. you? Yep. So in terms of how often you deal with them, Mm -hmm. during the course of the year when you're away. It, he comes over, no doubt, occasionally, doesn't yeah. he? Yeah. Um, so this year I actually did things different. I came to Perth. Um, I think I returned home maybe four or five times during the season for two to three week spans. So um, the first week I would generally take the week off just to, you know, get my jet lag and everything all sorted and then, you know, train with him for a couple of weeks. So I think he actually only came over to the US once um, and that was actually to see Minji because I was at home at the time. So... Um, it's worked well in that sense because there's only really so much you can do during a tournament week and I don't have too many weeks off in the US. Um, so it would, he would generally be coming to tournaments. But it, I mean, next year um, with the Olympics, with Minji being in the team and hopefully me being in the second position there, um, he'll definitely come there and perhaps some other events as well. Um, I think it's important for him to come and watch some tournament play because sometimes you can say you've had a great day and it's not, and then vice versa. So it'd be good for him to see it in person. Hannah, can I just ask, you mentioned a couple of times, you know, missing 10 cuts mm -hmm. before, not expecting to win this year. Mm -hmm. When did you believe that you belonged on the LPGA Tour? When did you feel comfortable? Was there a tournament or a moment where you, you felt within yourself that you were in a good place? It, yeah, um, I probably would say last year's Australian Open. Um, I was in contention and played with the, in the final group and ended up coming third that week. Um, it's pretty early in, to say that. It was only my second um, tournament as a rookie. So, But I think self-belief is the biggest thing with this sport. Um, you see so many people that are so talented, but they just don't have the self-belief and that's why they don't make it. So um, by that stage, I probably felt like I did deserve to be out there, but in no means did I think it was easy. Um, I definitely know that you've got to work hard and um, with the, I guess, Asian influence on tour, all those girls are practicing all the time and that's not how I would approach it. But I think uh, mentally is probably just as hard um, believing that you want to be out there. And can I just ask which of the four days at KPMG was the toughest? You know, I mean, 
I guess it gets gradually tougher. Yeah, I think I think Saturday to be honest, because you know you've you've held the lead for a few days and then you've got one more round and that's it. Um, it was great. I had a really good Saturday night. I was really lucky that by the time I'd gotten to the golf course, uh, so home from the golf course, um, the food was ready. I was staying with Kari and a few others in the house and, you know, we prepared an Aussie barbecue. So there was about a dozen of us um, at our place. So at least I was in my own house that I'm familiar with. But even just to have, you know, Aussie banter and chatting and um, no one was avoiding the situation. They all knew, obviously, the stakes, but... Um, it didn't feel like, I guess they didn't feel like they were putting pressure on me. Um, so, yeah, I think I was really lucky to be amongst so many, you know, close people in my life um, that Saturday night. And that's probably when I felt the most nerves. But I managed to get some good rest for Sunday, which was good. Just quickly, did Kari run the barbecue? Or? Yep. Yeah, she cooked. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Everyone else contributed um, in the house, which was cool. But, yeah, Kari uh, cooked that night. She's pretty good, very good. Is she a good cook? Yeah, yeah what, she what, is. What was the she, steak, sausages? What uh, we had rissoles. We had steak and sausages. I think we had potato bake and then some veggies and stuff. So, yeah, it was, it was great. Honestly, it was, it was really fun. Last one. I just wanted to touch on the medal. Mm -hmm. uh, can you just describe for me the emotions and what you were thinking when you heard your name read out? Yeah, it's pretty cool. Um, I guess it was, well... Obviously, against you know Scotty, Minji, and Leash, it's pretty hard competition. Um, so when even to see Kari presenting the medal to me, I was like, "Gosh, this gives me chills." Um, someone who's been a big influence on my career and um, influence to Australian golf. Um, yeah, it was definitely really exciting. And um, now that they have it, it's really cool. Um, even seeing the Scotty on the last green, you know, we're both trying to fight for the medal each year. So it's really cool. Thanks, guys.